So assuming you've bought your seed, you're probably now wondering, well, what do I need to do to get my seeds ready so that when the warmer days ahead come, I'll have my plants ready to set out. Today, Carl Ashlock is going to show us that and a whole lot more in this edition of Greener Pastures. Hi, I'm Jeremy, and I'm so glad that you're joining us for the second installment in this Gardening with Carl series. Today, Carl's going to show us how to get our seeds started indoors. But before he does, I just have to say that this is one of the most exciting aspects of gardening, in my opinion. That you take a little seed that came in a packet, perhaps through the mail, and you take that seed, you place it underneath some dark, rich soil. And within days, you see a little green sprout emerge. Something that appeared so dead produces life. And I find it interesting that that's what Jesus used to describe his death. He says here in John 12, verse 23, the hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. And speaking of his death, most assuredly I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. And so Jesus died so that he, by his power, could infuse us with new life. Think about it. Jesus went into the grave, into the ground on Friday. He rested in the ground on Sabbath. And on Sunday, he emerged from the ground with new life. And so it is that when we surrender to him, when we die to our selfish ways, we experience new life and we begin to bear new fruit. So when you plant that seed in your little grow box, please, won't you remember that promise that Jesus extends to each of us, that when we die to self, he will grant us new life. Join me now as we listen to Carl. So I want to explain a little bit about how you can successfully begin your plants and you can actually do it in your home. And uh, you need a few very simple things and plus you need one or two, well maybe five or six specific principles that make it work. First of all, you need a container and you need a container that will that will uh, be the size in which you can place your seed uh, that will accommodate the, the particular variety that you're planting. For instance, uh, you can get these kind of trays with the much smaller containers where you can grow very small seed like lettuce and cruciferous and things like that. The, the only thing is that if you plant in a small container like this, you're going to need to take those plants and transplant them quite soon because you don't want them to stay in there long enough for the roots to begin to become bound. So keep that in mind if you happen to want to use one of these. The nice thing about these are that they provide you an awful lot of growth space. Now, you can actually use just the opposite, something that is larger than what I'm using here. And what I like to do is if I'm planting tomatoes, I will plant four tomatoes in each one of these containers. And then in about three weeks or four weeks, when those little plants are about this tall, I take them out and transplant them. And I'll show you how that's done. Now, today I want to show you uh, as, a, as a demonstration, this particular tray, because you can buy this in Greenville at uh, Walmart. Walmart has these. And I've never seen them with, with this kind of configuration. Uh, normally they're round or they're square. But uh, these happen to be this way. And the important thing is to buy a very good seed starting mix. And uh, I wanted you to see what you can buy here. Jiffy is uh, a very good seed mix and you can get them here uh, at, uh, I think it's Walmart or maybe Lowe's. Um, now this one here, I'm not certain where I got it, but it's a very good seed starter. 
and that's what I have in here. Actually, both of these look very much the same, so I don't think it really matters. But anyway, you want a seed mix, and be very careful because a lot of people make the mistake of going and thinking that a potting mix is what they should use, or at least they think they can use a potting mix, but a potting mix is not to start seeds. It's normally to transplant a larger plant into a large planter. So a seed starting uh, um, mix is what you will need in order to start your seed. And uh, one of the principles is that the seed size you want to cover it about three times the depth of the seed. <laughs> and that's not very deep. A lot of people make the mistake of planting seed too deep. And you want to make sure that you don't do that. It would be better to plant it too shallow than too, too, too deep because sometimes they won't emerge. Thankfully, the planting soil, the seed soil, is very pliable and soft and seed can work its way up. Now, the next thing you want to keep in mind is the temperature. You want your soil to be reasonably warm. And the, what is considered the ideal temperature is 80 degrees. And so it's good to have a soil thermometer. And you can get those at most any uh, uh, garden center. So I have this one and I put it in here and I notice it's 80 degrees and that's ideal for warm weather plants. Uh, tomatoes or warm weather, peppers, eggplant. You can plant them and you want, you want it to be about 75 to 85 degrees. That's when the seed will, will emerge and sprout much quicker. Uh, the other thing that you want is you want your soil to be reasonably moist. You don't want it too wet and you certainly don't want it too dry. So you want to wet this soil down the moment you get it in there. You just wet it down and have it nice and wet and make sure that your temperature is right and then you plant your seed. Now, the next step that I like to remind people is that what is important is you can maximize the space here by planting two seeds in these little small spaces. Two seeds because what you're going to want to do is transplant this little seedling when it gets about three inches tall, three or four inches tall, you want to transplant it into a container. And what I use are these uh, styrofoam cups that you can buy at most any you know, store. And um, you want to start with a small one like this, or it doesn't matter really if you do use a larger one, but I like to start with one like this because it's more manageable underneath the grow lights. You can put more of these under there. Um, and the reason you want to transplant this when it's still small is you don't want the, this to remain in here so that the roots became, become uh, tangled up and grow too long. You want to transplant it in here where it has more room for the roots to continue uninterrupted in their growth process. And as this grows, if it grows, like for instance, uh, the one thing you want to keep in mind is your frost, first frost date. Your first frost date in Greenville, uh, that is only 5% chance of frost, is actually the first of May. And so if you're shooting for that time when you have no chance of frost, you will want to think in terms of the fact that you're going to be transplanting your tomato plant out into your garden when you know that you're not going to have any frost. So calculate by the way that you continue to transplant these without you know, them becoming constrained. Just You can actually keep transplanting them into larger containers so that they can continue to grow without becoming uh, tangled up in here. Um, I hope that's clear uh, so that you understand that. Now, in order to keep your, your tray nice and warm, there's such a thing as a heat pad. And you can get these. They come in a container. I had one of those. Um, you can buy these uh, at 
Amazon, you can get them actually at, uh, at Walmart and, and Lowe's. But uh, these come in handy because you put this on there and it will heat it up to the right temperature. Now I want to talk to you just for a few moments about this device here. You can have grow lights and really not spend a lot of money. Uh, a lot of people spend an exorbitant amount of money for grow lights that have what is called full spectrum light. But you really don't need that for transplant plants. That's more used for plants that you're going to have in your house all the time. They need full spectrum. You don't need full spectrum to get these plants up to the size that you're going to transplant them. So you just buy the cheapest shop light that you can buy. Uh, they, they probably don't cost more than about 10 or $12. And then just put two of the cheapest um, fluorescent bulbs. You want them to be about 40 watts. Put them in each one. And uh, you can build a device like this. The important thing is that once you get your seed in, you want to set it up here about four to five inches underneath the light for the first until they emerge. And when they emerge, which will be about four or five days, when they begin to emerge, you're going to begin to lower it a little bit. Now, I want to show you uh, a picture here that will help you a little bit because this is what your plant's going to look like. It's going to grow up and these will be the first leaves. They're called the cotyledon leaves. They're not real leaves. They're actually part of the plant that helps it emerge out of the soil. It's uh, something that God designed that way. And then you will have your, your actual leaves. These are the tomato leaves. When these leaves take place on your little plant, what you want to do is trim these cotyledon leaves, cut them off. The fact that you cut them off will stimulate these leaves to grow more vigorously. It will also cause the stem to swell a little bit and to become stronger. Now, that was something that I didn't know for years, but somehow I picked it up because they're constantly studying these things you know, in agriculture. So these are the true leaves. This is the cotyledon leaves. And uh, you begin to, um, to, once this begins this way and you trim these, only then is when you should begin fertilizing. Don't fertilize here. Don't fertilize even in here until your plant is like this and really growing then when you fertilize, do it very weakly, not a strong fertilizing. It's not like if you fertilize strong, it's going to grow more. It won't work that way. These little plants are so tender and so fragile that what they need is a very weak um, combination of water and something like uh, Vigoro uh, vegetation plant food which you can get at Home Depot, Vigoro. It's a very fine kind. And it doesn't have to be necessarily an organic fertilizer at this stage. I do strongly recommend organic everything once you transplant into your garden and even as much as you can here. But at this stage, it's not going to hurt to have something that uh, is, is um, you know, considered just standard fertilizer. So a liquid fertilizer, half, half uh, strength is what you might add, but do it very, very gradually. You want to be sure and label everything because if you're like me, you're going to forget what your different varieties are. And so you want to label it. You want to put the date on it. And then it's a good idea to keep a journal. I have a journal that I always keep for my garden. Each year, I normally start a new one, and I everything I plant, I write down. I write down how many I've done. I write down the date that I've done it. And I wanna make sure that I keep up with everything because when you grow this stuff, 
and you begin to eat the food, there are certain things that you're going to want to replant because it was so good. So I hope you have a lot of fun um, doing this and uh, you'll find that this is one of the most pleasant parts of your gardening. Good luck. Again, isn't it helpful to hear these practical tips and advice from a seasoned gardener like Carl? If you found today's presentation helpful, please consider subscribing to this channel, hit the like button, and share it with friends. Also, remember in the description, we put links to some of the items that Carl referenced in his presentation. Remember to join us next week as we seek together to explore greener pastures. Mm -hmm.